Hello everyone, my name is Mandy Lynn. I'm an author, a book cover designer, and the creator of the Book Launch Planner, and today we're talking about how to write a novel fast in 30 days for National Novel Writing Month. So NaNoWriMo is just around the corner, so today I wanted to take the time to really delve into how to fast draft a novel. This means everything from the brainstorming phase to the actual writing of the novel, and of course, things not to do so you don't get caught up in yourself and waste your time when you could be writing. Before we jump into the video, I did want to let you know about something fun that's going on right now. So as the creator of the Book Launch Planner, I am currently doing a voting of for the cover of the book launch planner. This means that right now, if you visit the link down below, you can vote on the design for the cover of the planner. Phase one will just be the design, and then phase two, once we have the design picked out, we're gonna pick out the colors of the book launch planner. So again, visit the link down below to cast your vote, or follow me over on Instagram at the book launch planner to stay up to date with all the news. Now to go back to the video, the first draft of your book is usually almost always the hardest part of writing a novel. I just finished the first draft of my fourth novel, which is still untitled, but it certainly took a lot of effort on my part, but I did write it in about the span of a month and a half. With that said, I've taken everything I've learned and I'm compiling it into this video so you can win NaNoWriMo this year. Now these first few steps you should be doing before November even starts. Usually you do this during October, also known as Preptober. Now the first thing you want to do is step one, which is brainstorming. During the brainstorming phase, you are basically writing down every single idea that pops into your head. The way I do it is that I have a dedicated notebook for each book I write, and in that notebook, I just write down everything, whether you think it's a good idea or a bad idea. At the beginning of the process, every idea is a good idea. Step two is to identify your book's genre, and by this, I don't mean your typical genre of whether it's fantasy or a thriller or anything like that. I mean the Save the Cat genre. So if you guys haven't read this book yet, it is Save the Cat Writes a Novel by Jessica Brody. It is an amazing book all about plotting and structuring your novel. I love it. My favorite thing to do after the brainstorming phase is to go through the 10 different Save the Cat genres and figure out which genre my book fits. And the reason you want to do that is once you know what genre your book is, you know what the story structure should be because every story has an overarching structure but in, in within each genre there are certain elements that you need to include so before you start the outlining phase I like to figure out what my genre is so here are the ten genres why done it a mystery must be solved Rites of passage, a hero must endure the pain and torment brought about by life's common challenges. Institutionalized, a hero enters or is already entrenched inside a certain group, institution, establishment, or family and must make a choice to join, escape, or destroy it. Superhero, an extraordinary hero finds themselves in an ordinary world and must come to terms with being special or destined for greatness. Dude with a problem, an innocent ordinary hero suddenly finds themselves in the midst of extraordinary circumstances and must rise to the challenge. Full triumphant, an underestimated underdog hero is pitted against some kind of establishment and improves a hidden worth to society. Buddy love, a hero is transformed by meeting someone else including but not limited to love stories friendship stories and pet stories out of the bottle an ordinary hero is temporarily touched by magic usually involving a wish fulfillment or curse bestowed and the hero learns an important lesson about appreciating and making the most of reality golden fleece a hero or group goes on a road trip of some type even if it's not an actual road in search of one thing and winds up discovering something else themselves. Last but not least, monster in a house, a hero or group of heroes must overcome some kind of monster, supernatural or not, in some kind of enclosed setting or limited circumstances and someone is usually responsible for bringing the monster into being. 
So once you have your genre of your book identified, you can move on to the next step, which is outlining. So the only reason I was able to write the first draft of my fourth novel so fast was because I used the save the cat method, I used all the beats that are featured in the book. I don't have time to go over it in this video, but I highly, highly recommend you read this book. I will link it down below. Um, but basically, if you follow the beats, the book really writes itself. There's a structure to everything, and while you may say, oh, if there's a structure to it, it's not going to be original, that's I, I have to disagree. As long as you put your own spin to it, you can follow the structure of the beats and still have a completely original story. And the, the beats work for a reason. People crave a sort of structure when it comes to story, and this book allows the story to have that structure. So now that we've done some brainstorming, we know the genre, we have the outline of the book, you may think you're ready to start writing, but if you want to write fast, there's a few more steps you need to do first. And that next step is scheduling time. So this is super important, especially if you want to write a novel in a month because it's going to require a lot of time on your part. So what you want to do is you want to look at your month of November and you want to figure out how many days in that month you actually have time to write. And you may say, hey, there's 30 days in November, I can write every single day. My suggestion is to give yourself at least one day off once a week so you have some time to recoup and relax and you're not burning yourself out. Personally, I also like to figure out what days I have time to write the most. So on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I work from home. I normally have a one hour commute one way. So on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I have an extra two hours to my day. So on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I know I can write about 2,000 words. Whereas Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I usually only have time to write a thousand words. Whereas on Saturdays, because I have the day off and it's just a leisure day, I put myself in to write 3,000 words. So my favorite thing to do is I make a spreadsheet and I write each day of the week on the spreadsheet and I write what my word count goal is for that day. So I like to say, you know, this day I'll write a thousand words, this day I'll write 2,000 and so on. If I know I'm gonna be busy one day, I'll give myself a day off and that's just something good to plan for. I also use the spreadsheet to track my word count as I go. So as I write my words, I write how many words I've written that day versus what my actual word count goal was. That way I can see if I'm getting ahead of myself or if I'm falling behind. So now is the part where we actually get to move on to the next step, which is actually writing the novel. So this is where it gets the hardest part because you're actually doing the brunt work. Everything up until now was prep work you did it before National Novel Writing Month, but now it's November and you are ready to write. So basically, all you have to do is write. Easier said than done. But I do have some tips and tricks of things not to do so you get more writing done and less rewriting done. So the first thing that you should not do is rewrite. My thing is, is when you're writing, never go back and reread what you've already written because then you're going to be tempted to edit it and you don't want to do that. You may also read what you've already written and think that it sucks and that you have to go back and correct it. Or maybe you just think it sucks and you're like, why should I even bother finishing it? Don't get yourself psyched out by reading what you've already written. Just keep going forward. Never go back words when you're trying to fast draft a novel. My next thing that you shouldn't do is think too much about something. So if you're writing and you find yourself pausing and you're really thinking about something, just write something down. I don't care if it sucks or if it's fabulous, just write anything. I, I, One of the best things that you need to do to really master the art of fast drafting is just get used to writing fast and doing writing sprints. Writing sprints is one of the best skills you can have as a writer and basically the goal is to start off in small increments with writing sprints that last about five minutes and work yourself up to writing sprints that last about a half hour to an hour. Now basically during a writing sprint the goal is to never stop typing and if you never stop typing you'll have a lot of words written. Will they be the best words in the world? No, 
but the goal is to just get the first draft written. Your first draft will be your worst draft. It's going to suck no matter what, so don't worry about it. Just know that there's always the option to edit later. What you want right now is you want the bare bones of your story. Once you get the bare bones of your story down, you can worry about it perfecting later on. But right now, the whole point of National Novel Writing Month is just to write. It's just to get that first draft. It's just to get the bad words written down so you can get the good words out later on. If you guys are interested, one thing I do once a month is I host the 10K Writing Challenge. This is the goal to write 10,000 words in one day. So if you are falling behind for NaNoWriMo or you want to get ahead of yourself before you fall behind, the next 10K Writing Challenge takes place November 9th. The link to sign up will be down below. The rules are simple. Write 10,000 words in one day. When you write 10,000 words in one day, you get a sticker in the mail and you get to, you know, have bragging rights. So if you are interested in getting ahead of yourself, do sign up for the challenge or if you just want to write for the sake of writing, sign up for the challenge. And even if you don't write 10,000 words, the goal of that day is just to write. Even if you only write a thousand words, odds are you'll leave inspired because everyone else that day is focused so much on writing that you're just motivated to keep going. So again, the link to sign up is down below. That is it for today's video. I hope you found it helpful. I hope you guys all have an amazing time during NaNoWriMo. If you are participating, let me know in the comments down below. Tell me a little bit about your project. What's the genre, whether it be the Save the Cat genre or a traditional genre. Just get to chatting in the comments down below. Get to know each other because the best way to win NaNoWriMo is to feel motivated from the community. Thank you all for watching. If you'd like to stay up to date with everything I'm up to, be sure to subscribe to my newsletter, which is linked down below. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up, comment down below, and subscribe.